Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 15 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. If you haven't watched the last episodes, then I highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to cover is profiling. And for those who don't know what it is, it means to um, analyze where um, the computer is spending most of its time in order to optimize the script and make sure that your game runs fast and your server runs fast as well. Um, so profiling on the server and profiling on the client is a little bit different, but I'm going to cover both in this video. Okay, so let's get started with client profiling. So it's by far the easiest of the two. So you want to press um, F12, F12 to open the developer tools. You should already be familiar with that because that's how you debug with the console. So you already know the console um, elements. It's like your HTML page. So you see all your divs and canvas and, and form, stuff like that. And um, in this video, what the part that interests us is the profile. So this is the profile. So there are four types of profiles you can um, do. In this video, we'll only be covering the CPU profile because that's um, the most important, actually, in our case. Um, snapshot is for memory. So if you have memory problem, that's where um, you will need to look at. There's also a location, but that's a little bit more complex. So I will stick with the CPU profiling for now. So to do the actual profiling, it's pretty easy. You just click start and then you play normally like a, a normal player would. So what's currently going on is that the computer is analyzing what function is being called every microsecond. And when you will press stop, it's gonna take all the data he has accumulated and make a little um, chart for your table. And this will tell us um, how often function are being called and how long we spend in each function. So let's just do stop and see what it got. Okay, so now we'll go over the profiling report. So make sure that you're in the tree, um, tree top down. So you can use the, the heavy bottom up. It's useful for certain types of um, CPU problems, but I, I find the tree one to be a lot um, easier to understand. So here you got all the main functions, so the, the global function of your of your code. A program, you cannot touch it. So it's like hidden stuff. This is also hidden stuff. Garbage collector is for memory. Um, WS on message is when receiving a message from WebSocket. So WS is for WebSocket. There's our document on mouse down and stuff like that. There's anonymous function. Anyway, in our case, we got two main function, this anonymous function line 111, this is our loop. So in our loop, we got the bullet draw function, player draw, draw map, draw score. So as you can see, draw score takes 8% of our CPU. That's pretty big, um, considering we are only writing one letter. But it is always big. So when you draw text, it takes well, you can see it right there. Drawing this zero takes more CPU than drawing the map. So text is very expensive on Canvas. Um, then we got draw map and draw bullet. So you see the percentage. So as you can see, if we could optimize something in our code, that would be um, the draw score. And there's many ways to do that. Um, and then there's the on mouse move, so socket emit. And at this point, we cannot really touch anything here because that's um, socket IO that comes in. So we cannot like optimize this part except by calling socket emit less often or with packages, um, smaller packages. Okay, so our goal right now is to optimize the draw score function. So as you can see, there, there's nothing in that function. It's just the fact that drawing text is very expensive. Now, um, one thing that could be happening is that the draw score is being called in multiple places. So that's something that could be happening. And that's where the heavy is useful. So you click heavy. And then if you check on the total time, you click draw score. And this will give you the list of people that call the draw score. So as you can see, there's only one and it's the, the main loop over here. But if there was another places that would be calling where am I? That would be calling draw score, then it would appear over there. So for example, the socket 
For example, socket init, this function is called from on move, on key up, and on key down. So you see the, the list. So that's what I said. Um, that's what I meant when I said that sometimes the avid is better, sometimes the tree is better. It depends on what type of information you're looking for. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is the difference between the self time and the total time. So what it means is the, the self time is the time spent inside a function without including the external um, function call and the total time is including the uh, external function call. And what I mean by external function call is um, every function calls. For example, this over here is an operation not done inside the function, it's uh, done outside in the clear rec function. Same goes for draw map. So, um, when we call draw map, it goes over here and does that code over there. So it's not included. Th this thing over here is not included in the self time of the set interval, but in it's included in the total time. Total time is really the time to get from the top to the bottom. But if we were to um, do this over here, so we place this here, then this would include be included in the the self time of set interval. Now, in order to fix our draw score problem, there are two main ways to do that. The first way and the easiest one is to split the game in two canvas because right now we are using uh, one canvas called CTX, and every frame we need to refresh it. And because we refresh it, we clear everything. We need to redraw the number. Well, in fact, it stays the same all the time. That, that's the problem. It's always the same thing, but because we clear the canvas, we need to draw it again. So by having two canvas, one on, one on top of each other, we can change the refresh rate of both. So we could refresh the game canvas, so everything that has the map and the player and the bullets. So we could um, keep that. Um, keep refreshing that every single frame. But for the UI um, canvas that includes the um, score and eventually a lot more stuff, we could only refresh it when something actually changes. Um, so that's what I will be um, doing right now. But anyway, let's work on adding the other canvas. So what we will do is just um, create a new one that we will call CTX UI and um, it's going to be the same size than the other one and we need to make sure that they are on top of each other. So in order to make um, two things on top of each other, we use the um, absolute, the, the position absolute in CSS. So I don't really plan on covering CSS too much. I will keep that for the HTML um, tutorial series that I got. And in this video, I want to focus more on the, the logic aspects of multiplier. But um, long story short, um, position absolute allows us to put two things on top of each other and but by using position absolute you need to specify the absolute position in our case we want it to be top left um, 8 px so that's a little gap over here that you see that's 8 pixel so we're gonna do that for um, both so now we will have two canvas on top of each other and we need to grab it over here. So we'll have this or to canvas. There we go. And now for the draw score, what we will be doing is we will keep track of what was the last score of the player, let's say minus one. So we are sure to not um, have anything we could actually put null, it would be safer. And we're gonna make sure we're gonna check a is the last score equal to the, the current score? If so, there's nothing to be done, we just return. If it's not the case, then we want to set the last score equal to the, the score, and then we want to draw the text like we used to, something like that. And I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, so now let's see how it compares. So let's just refresh the game, go over here, profile, start a new one, start shooting randomly. Not sure, oh yeah, the yellow, I will fix that later. Um, so we shoot bullets and then we do stop. And let's see how much time we spend on the draw. There we go. We spend 0.03% in the draw score compared to 8.80% before. So 
that's a big improvement and the end result for the player it's exactly the same thing than before exactly the same thing now obviously if the, the the text would change very often the performance would be uh, different but in our case that was a, a big performance gain and in general it's always a, a good idea to separate the UI and the um, the game world okay so now I'm gonna fix the um, little hello problem over there so what happens when you put something position absolute is that it no longer takes space and it no longer pushes the the other elements so even if um, like we put this, the, the LO is over here. So it's below the canvas, but because this is absolute, it's kind of like this did not exist. So it shows up in the top. So uh, I'm just gonna fix it real quick. So margin top 500 PX. So the margin is kind of like the equivalent of left, left and top when dealing with not absolute position elements. But like I said, I don't want to get too much into that for this video. Okay, so now I'm going to cover how to profile on the server. So it's a little bit different. So the first thing you want to do is to install the profiler. It's called V8 um, Profiler. So just install it. I, I've already installed it, so I don't need to do that, but you will need to. And once this is installed, um, like any other module, um, what you will need to do is to do the require. Give me one sec. So you do require at the top. So this will load the, the library. We will also need um, the module called FS. So this is file system. So FS comes with Node.js. So you don't need to install it with um, NPM. It's kind of like HTTP. We did not install HTTP. It comes with Node.js natively. Um, and with the profiler, what we can do is copy paste this over here. So as usual, you will be able to download the code. Um, it will be in the description. Um, so this function that I just created takes one parameter called the duration. Um, it starts a profiling with the um, ID one. It can be anything really. After the duration, it stops the profiling, calls the export, and, and it's gonna write a file. So export the result of the profiling into um, this file over here. The dot slash, what it means is that it's gonna be in the same directory than the app.js file. So it's gonna appear over there. I, I, I could have put something like slash client, something like that, and it would have showed up over there. And in our case, we want to keep it like that. Then we delete it because it takes a lot of memory. And then a console log, it, it should be straightforward. And to use that, you simply call start profiling 100,000, so it's gonna last for 10 seconds, for example. Let's just save and test it. So let's call not app.js, go over here, log in, start shooting bullets. And after 10 seconds, I don't know how long it's been, should be 10 seconds, it should say profile saved. Then we open over here and we get this file over there. Now what you do with this file, you cannot really read it with um, like a text editor or anything. What you do, it's super cool. You go over here in the dev tools, the same thing than before, and there's that button loads. And it's kind of magic, but the, um, the file you export from Node.js is exactly the same file that Google Chrome is using. You can simply reuse exactly the same thing and you will see all the function over there. It's really cool. So yeah, you probably think it's uh, a normal feature, but about two years ago, it was a really big mess to have profiling on the Node.js server because the files were not compatible and it was a, a big, big mess. But anyway, now it works, so use it. It's really great. Um, now, like I said at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of random stuff on the server and what interests you the most 99% of the time is the list on um, timeout wrapper and there we go we go inside our actual function and there we can see where we spent time I won't really go over it too much because it's exactly the same than before but you get your socket on emit um, that you cannot really touch because this is socket IO there's um, bullet update you can see that we spend a lot of time updating it stuff like that get distance and anyway 
I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next video. So, see ya.